Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we will talk about my cooperation with Noctua. As you can see, I have a U12A air cooler sitting on my table right here. And you might also have seen the video from Linus Tech Tips during Copytex. He was already talking about the NM DD1, which is an accessory, an additional mounting kit to make these kind of air coolers or like the NHD15 compatible with Thermal Grizzly direct dive frames. So you can mount these direct die to the current AMD AM5 CPUs. That should be quite entertaining, especially considering what kind of temperature gains we've shown in the past. Also during the AM5 launch video, we showed that there can be massive temperature gains. And with an air cooler, this can also be like massive gains and then maybe also a bit more cost effective. So that should be quite interesting. I have a Ryzen 5 7600 right here, which we will then also later delete to obviously mount the cooler on there. But first of all, we will get some baseline numbers. Today's video is powered by Hetzner with the AX52 dedicated root server. With the powerful Ryzen 7700 8-core CPU and 64GB DDR4 memory in the base config, the AX52 is the perfect all-rounder. Two quick 1TB Gen 4 NVMe SSDs are available to rapidly access your data. If you wish, you can also extend this further, for example, with two additional 2TB NVMe SSDs or two 16TB HDDs. Depending on your requirements, you can select either Germany or Finland as location of your new dedicated root server. Find out more in the link below. There's our baseline setup for comparison. We are running a 360 AIO from Corsair with balanced profile on the pump and running a fixed fan speed of 1200 RPM on the fans. The CPU is running a fixed overclock of 5.2 GHz across all of the six cores. It's static just for easier temp comparison and it's also running a static voltage of 1.33 volt. Now that we are running Cinebench R23, you can see that the temperature quickly ramps up to just above 90 degrees Celsius and it will actually also increase further over time. Once the radiator will be saturated, we saw about 94 degrees Celsius peak. So this CPU is really running on the limit. There is not much, not much more headroom. We could slightly increase the voltage further, maybe 1.35 volt, but that would be the absolute limit because then we would hit about 95 degrees Celsius on this CPU. Peak temperature of this run was just below 94 degrees Celsius and the CPU score was 14,600 points. The Noctua NM DD1 kit is available for about $5, which is definitely cheap. And we have three plastic pieces and some screws that are included. And it depends on the cooler, which kind of plastic pieces you have to use. They're also available as 3D printed parts if you want to print them at home. So we have the NM DDS1 part. That would be, for example, for a Noctua NHD15, because the main challenge running an air cooler on a deleted CPU is that we change the mounting height. So we are getting rid of the heat spreader and also some indium layer in between. This means that we are getting rid of about four millimeters of material. So the air cooler has to sit about four millimeters lower. And that's exactly what we are achieving with these plastic parts. For the NHD15, you would remove these metal parts right here and then put the plastic washer or like this sensor in between and then screw it back on with the included screws. And this way we adjust the mounting height. Same goes, for example, for the U12A, which I have right here. It just requires the other plastic part. We are removing this metal bar right here from the screw that sits in the center and then put in the plastic piece in between, basically like that from the other side, obviously. And then also this one would sit about four millimeters lower and then make proper contact to the CPU dies. We are testing this with the U12A today. I'm going to use the included screwdriver that goes all the way to the bottom. And then we're removing the screw from the center. Now we take the plastic piece, put the bar on top, also add the screw, and put the entire package, package back into the cooler. And this would be the entire kit ready to go and mounted. Obviously, we now also have to delete our 7600, but we already showed this process multiple times, so we will just skip this. There are also a few details I want to share on the recent AMD CPUs. So that, for example, is the 
800X 3D. That's a 7600X. Also, if you compare the X3D CPU, this is a pretty recent one, to the one I showed in the launch video, for example, these CPUs now have glue on these outer pads. Whereas if you compare it to this 7600, for example, there is no glue on these solder pads. So that's something they changed on the X3D CPUs, which led to the fact that the X3D CPUs are no longer compatible to the direct diaphragm. It's still compatible to the deliver, for example, but not to the direct diaphragm for whatever reason. And then also on this one, the 7600, they changed the glue, which is also quite interesting. If you might remember, or if you want to check an older video, you can see that the glue on the older CPUs was just a blob, just round. And now they have this like, I don't know, 90 degree shape on the glue. So AMD is definitely changing some parts during production. I already removed the AMD SAM, now putting the 7600 back into the socket. And on top, we put the direct diaphragm. And that's again the reason why here and here it would collide with a 7800X 3D or 7950X 3D, because these pads would also, like this one, be covered with glue. You could theoretically just take a frame and then file away a part of the aluminum right here to make it compatible, but out of the box it would not fit. You would have to do a modification yourself. It might only take like five to 10 minutes. You can do that yourself. Just have to be careful to make sure that it's like not sitting on top of here. And also there are no sharp edges once you did some modifications to it. For today's video, we are going to use CryoSheet because this will make this system maintenance free. You don't have to change liquid metal or like the paste or whatever after time. And the only downside is that CryoSheet is electrically conductive. So we also have to tape off just using some Kapton tape, tape off the electrically like exposed components, capacitors that are sitting around. Now ready to go to put the cryo sheet back on. I also would recommend to use this if you do liquid metal. Just pay attention that you use something very thin like this Kapton tape, which is also suitable for high temperature applications. And the main part though is that it's quite thin. Otherwise, if you use like a thicker electrically insulation, whatever sheet, then it could be that it's building up too high, especially if you have like two layers of, like stacked on top, then this could build up too high that it would harm or like, yeah, have a negative impact on the contact. Noctua also has these NMAMB15 offset mounting bars, which we're also going to use for the Noctua cooler. And this will allow to move the cooler slightly south. So it will sit more towards the CCD that contains all the cores, more towards the hotspot, should reduce the temperature further by maybe like one, two, best case, three degrees Celsius. These offset mounting bars come with two holes. So you have the top one that says seven millimeter, which means that in this case, the CPU cooler would be moved by seven millimeter southwards. And if you would like to use that hole, that would be the stock mounting condition. So the CPU cooler would sit slightly higher. Then also just have to pay attention to these metal bars. It says CPU in that direction and that this is the part for east. So it's sitting east of the CPU. And then I also have to attach the second one. The cryo sheet is now also in place. That means the last thing to do is to mount the CPU cooler. I just went to Windows the first time and then I saw an idle temperature of about 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, which is definitely too high, especially considering for direct dye that it should be improved, but it was a bit worse. And then I removed the cooler again, checked the cryo sheet and I saw like a crack or like some tiny cracks in the cryo sheet. Then I thought, okay, maybe I was not gentle enough during the mounting tried again and it was the same result. Then I did like close inspection and I think it could be related to how this air cooler is mounted because if you pay very close attention to the cooler while screwing it down, you can see that it slightly moves back and forth by maybe half a millimeter or a millimeter. That's probably due to the, yeah, the tiny movement that's possible on the screws and also that you have those springs and also that it's only a two point mounting and not a four point mounting. So that could be the case, but it seems like because of the tiny cooler movement, it cracks the cryo sheet. So it could be that it's not recommended to use the cryo sheet for like direct dye with this type of cooler mounting. That's why I will just move quickly to liquid metal just to see if it works well with liquid metal as expected. And then we could later on use one of those upgrade heat spreaders and try again with cryo sheet because I previously used cryo sheet multiple times direct dye with a water cooler and it was no problem. It was like pretty good in temperature, but 
for this it seemed not to be that well. Changed to liquid metal, also changed to the normal mounting away from the offset mounting simply to just see if this works exactly in this state and also applied liquid metal to the cooler. Same stock condition as previously, 5.2 GHz manual overclock, 1.33 volt fixed voltage for the CPU under load. And now also the temperature is exactly where I would expect it, like 45 degrees Celsius. So let's move over to load. And now under load, we see about 82 degrees Celsius under load. And that's a lot better than previously. We have an improvement of about 10 degrees Celsius over the Corsair AIO solution, especially keeping in mind that the air cooler, well, you have to buy some accessories, but it's still going to be cheaper. And that's why I think this is actually quite good. So we are peaking out at about 83, 84 degrees Celsius under load. And now that the benchmark run is also over, we can see that it's also hitting the same performance. So it's exactly the same condition, 14,600 points, but about 10 degrees Celsius lower than previously. Now, as I said, we will switch to the high performance heat spreader, which you also have seen before in a previous video. It's this nickel plated copper piece, also with the insulator sheet on the bottom. That's not the retail version with engraving on top and bottom. Also, this comes with an additional insulator sheet that's included in the high performance heat spreader which we will stick onto the CPU and this will easier allow to insulate from like the cryo sheet if you want to use it. So you don't have to use captain tape. That would be the result with the tiny sticker and the pre-cut also cryo sheet on top so I cut it a little bit to size to make sure it's not extending over the insulator sheet. High performance heat spreader is now also in place, which means I also have to remove the direct die kit from the Noctua cooler because this is almost stock height. It's about one millimeter lower, but it does not require the Noctua additional kit. Interestingly, this is still not quite as good as I expected. We can still see temperatures about like 92 degrees Celsius under load, which is just on par with the AIO, so there is not really an improvement, at least with this specific cooling setup. Now to come to a conclusion, using Noctua air coolers, especially in combination with the direct air mounting kit is absolutely interesting. You have to keep in mind though, that you will need a deliter for deleting the CPU and you will need the direct eye frame. The direct eye frame is about 40 euro. This kit is about five euro. The deliter is about 70 euro. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you can easily sell the deliter afterwards, maybe for 10, 20 euro less, and then you can save a good amount of money. So overall, a Noctua cooler with this type of performance will cost you somewhat like 110 euro, and then you have to add another 50 to 60 euro for the entire direct die cooling stuff. This will mean that you will have to invest about 170 euro for this entire cooling solution, but then it will be, will be better than a 200 euro AIO, which I personally find quite interesting. But it will also depend on the system you're planning to build, what kind of cooling requirements you have, what kind of space requirements you have. The only thing I also want to point out is that an AIO will have benefits in a system because this is open bench, which is very beneficial for an air cooler because an AIO can easily use direct cold air intake from the outside, which the air cooler cannot do. So inside a closed system, during gaming load, for example, the air cooler will intake hot air inside. So it will definitely be worse in a closed system than what you saw here. Still, with liquid metal, you saw that we can achieve very, very good temperatures. So if you already own a Noctua cooler, you want to go direct dye, it would be possible with this solution. At least for this type of air cooler, cryo sheet would not be recommended. I thought it would perform better, but it actually didn't. It could be because it's like tearing apart during mounting, but even with the high performance heat spreader, it did not perform that well that I would recommend it for this type of scenario. It's still good if you just use it on top of a heat spreader because it's like maintenance free, you don't have to change it or anything. But for this specific scenario, I would not do it. I would rather go for liquid metal for the direct dye solution in this case. Overall, very interesting to work with Noctua. It was my first time to have a cooperation with them. It's a very nice company, very nice people to work with. And yeah, thanks to Noctua. All the best to Austria and thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Bye bye.